Holston Edel. Welcome to another edition of Band Bikes and Booze Reviews. This is the Holston Edel from the Holston Brewery in Hamburg, in a place called Altona, which apparently is a suburb of Hamburg, and this is where the brewery is. Now, I've just tried or done a comparison video between the Holston Pilsner, brewed in Germany, in Altona, and the Holston Pils, brewed Fuck knows where. I thought it was brewed in Northampton, but it was full of French writing. And I've got a, a sneaky suspicion that it may have been brewed in France. And there's Percy. Wait, come on in. Well, Mr. Percy, what the fuck is going on? And here he is. Old Captain Twat himself. Oh. Hello, mate. Holston Edel, what do you reckon? No, not impressed. And I don't blame him either, because I wasn't too impressed either with the, um, the Holston Pilsner. I did a comparison, and I was expecting a stark difference between the stuff that was brewed over here, or the stuff that's available over here, and the stuff that's available in Germany. And where are you going? Calm down, mate. You ain't even had a beer, and you're falling over. Get out of it. I know where that tongue's been. Um, the Edel stuff <laughs> is supposed to be quite nice now i have tried this i tried this back in 2014 and the same mate that got me this got me it back in 2014 and i for the life of me i can't remember what it is so this is going to be a completely new one on me and i did ask him what edel meant you all right there, mate eating your feet i did ask him what edel meant in german and and even he couldn't explain it properly so, and, he, and he's one always taking the piss out of my, my pronunciations. I did think Edel had something to do with it being export beer. If you look at the Augustina Edel stuff, that is an export beer. I thought it had something to do with that. It hasn't. Apparently it means it's, it's fancy or something to do with finesse and all that. He started talking all wine language and I sort of switched off after that because, uh, yeah, if, if, if a German can't explain what Edel means, then I've got absolutely no fucking chance whatsoever. And even if I did, he would take the unmerciful piss out of my pronunciation. But there you go. Uh, Holston, been going since 1879, and they've got, as I say, in, in the... You wanna get down, do you, mate? Go on in and stop causing me ag while you're down there. He thinks I've got food. No, nothing's happening. All right, so just calm your tits. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, Holston. They've got quite a bit of a connection with the UK. They originally first came over here in 1902 and they bought a brewery in Wandsworth. The U or they took it over, uh, the Union Brewery, I think it's called. Wandsworth has got a little bit of a tradition going on with breweries. But of course, World War I ended all that with the big anti-German sentiment and that was the end of lager in the UK. I mean, people talk about lager in, in Europe and all that, and light-coloured beers have been a big thing, certainly in the 20th century, but they didn't really catch on in the UK because they saw it as a, as a German thing. And obviously bridges have been built now, and we're all friends, <laughs> to, qu to quote Basil Fort. We are all friends now, eh? All in the markets together. <laughs> Old difference is forgotten, and no need at all to mention the war. It's considered a German drink, and that's why it wasn't so popular over here in the UK. Now, if you, you look abroad and you look at Italy, you look at even France, I mean, fucking hell, I mean, them, them lot were drinking wine mainly, but they still have a little bit of a tradition of lager going on. All European countries do, but the UK hasn't. And I think it stems back to World War I, where at the turn of the century, lager was starting to become a thing. 
it was initially known as a ladies drink because it was light in color and light in flavor but then world war one just put the mockers on it and yeah that was it the word lager of course is german there was inroads in by other breweries uh, for example carlsberg uh, there's even one Kentish brewery that sadly no longer exists, the Fremlins Brewery. If you're you, if you're a beer geek, you'll have heard of them. But they even started brewing their own Danish style lager. Now, I think the reason that was again to shake off that German stigma. I mean, a lot of it has to do with the war, and people, you know, nowadays they take the piss out of people who hark back to what went on in the war and all that. And but at the time, you know, you you have to remember how much how significant that was in this country it was a, a huge time in the first world war especially it was a huge upheaval for this country even ireland as well you know a lot of irish fought in world war one as did two of my great uncles three of my great uncles in fact one survived two died you, you know and, and that's just the tip of the iceberg but in the uk a lot of villages had entire families wiped out so there was a lot of anti-German sentiment in the country at the time due to the war. And obviously, being serious, that's all calmed down now and lager is a huge thing in the UK. And Holston was as well. I mean, Holston did make big inroads back in the 1970s. And lager, to be honest, I will say this, lager really didn't make inroads into the UK until the sort of late 60s, early 70s, that's how long it took for that stigma to shake off. And yes, you could probably buy the odd lager here and there, but it wasn't popular. It was only sort of early, mid 70s, that's when it really started taking hold. And I do remember, even in pubs in the, in the sort of late 70s and early 80s, not that I was there, but I do remember certain people would be known for just drinking lager where everybody else would be drinking stuff like Double Diamond, which was an, a, an attempt at an IPA, uh, the Pale Ales, Watney's Pale Ale, that type of thing. That, would, that was the staple, Red Barrel, John Smith's was a thing. You know, that, that was what was being drunk, uh, the Webster's Bitter, that type of stuff. Lager really only took hold, as I say, in the sort of mid 70s to late 70s. Of course, the 80s, with the Australian lager, I mean, that that all of a sudden became palatable. Foster's, Swan, Tui's, Castle Maine, you know, all really bad lagers in my opinion. They started making inroads here. I'm sure they, well, I know for a fact they were brewed over here. They weren't brewed in Australia. That would just be, it just wouldn't make economic sense to bring it over here. But lager is, I wouldn't say a recent phenomenon, but it's a, it's a generation thing. It, I I remember the times when lager was just getting popular. Stella Artois was another one as well. So, and it it was one of them beers that was stronger or could be stronger than your average beer. Again, I, I don't really want to go too much into this. I want to review the beer, but I just want to give sort of younger subscribers a, a bit of an idea of what it was like. Certainly in the eighties when I first started drinking, in the early eighties. Um, stuff like Lovenbroy started coming over here and it, that was imported from West Germany. Stella Artois as well and they were strong beers, they were like 5%. Heineken was quite popular at the time. And I do remember um, Taylor Walker, their pubs had two lagers on draft and that was Heineken and Stella. And the Heineken was the weaker one, I think that was 3.5 or something like that. But Stella was 5% and that's where it got its nickname from. So there you go with its nickname, you know, the wife beater. Nickname. I don't agree with that. I think that's a fucking horrible nickname, if you if you ask me. But that's what it is known as. But there you go. Anyway, let's get back onto this stuff. Now, of course, the ha uh, Holsten, as I as I mentioned, do originate in Germany. They're from Hamburg in a place called Altona. The history of Holsten is one of taking over breweries as I just mentioned they took over the one in um, Wandsworth and all that and they also took over some German breweries as well one that springs to mind is the St Pauli brewery uh, but they got taken over themselves and I think this is this is a ploy by a lot of these big macro brewers they take over these independent brewers that have taken over other smaller brewers so they can just encompass the whole lot in one fell swoop and Holston were one of these brews. They got taken over by Interbrew in, I think, 1998, and then 
in 2004, I think they got taken over by Carlsberg, and the rest is history. To be honest, I haven't got high hopes for this. If it's anything like their Pilsner, then pff, I, I really didn't think much of that at all. I thought it was very, very average, the German stuff. I compared it with the stuff that was brewed over here, and it wasn't great. Percy's trying to jump up on me. Do you want to get up here, mate? Come on in. He he, he's like a... He's like my missus. He just cannot make his mind up. There you go. You're happy now. Right. So, I, I really haven't got high hopes for this one because the Pilsner wasn't that great. But I'm willing to be persuaded otherwise. So let's investigate this beer. Right, this is a 330ml dump, dumpy bottle. It is, oh, what is that, 4.8%. Um, this is all in German. I'm not even going to pretend to announce it. I've become, all of a sudden, I've become very self-conscious after my mate was taking the piss out of my German pronunciations and how badly I pronounce certain German words. So maybe I should just stop trying to be flash and just, uh, just pronounce it as an Englishman. Shout louder. I'm sure the Germans will understand. It's what we do. It's what we English do when people don't understand us. We just shout a little bit louder and of course people will understand it then. It's just maybe we just don't talk loud enough. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Um, I, was, I can see the word mild. <laughs> do you know, it's a fact. I've got to tell you this story. I'm looking at it, you know, just that just reminded me where I say I can see the word mild. I've probably told a story before, but this is what I do. I tend to repeat myself. But uh, I remember I used to drink in a pub in in Wood Green in North London when I lived in London, and there was a there's an old there's quite a few Irish blo blokes used to drink in there, and these were old boys. They were in their sixties, and I was sort of in my sort of late twenties, early thirties, and as you can imagine, Irishmen of that generation, I, I imagine they're like most people's granddads, they're very um, very basic, uh, basic needs, no finesse, yeah, know what they like, know what they don't like, and, and that's it, no pretense, no airs and graces, if you like. And uh, I remember some some wide boy, some, one of the local wide boys came in, and he, apparently he'd come across a lot of Cartier pens, and he was trying to sell them in a pub, and trying to sell Cartier pens in a pub in Wood Green, it's like trying to sell a telescope to a blind man, do you know what I mean? It, it just had no need for them, you know what I mean? Most of the people were using bookies pens or something like that, or pens they'd nicked out of Argos, you know what I mean? Cartier pens, fuck hell. But he was, he was walking around and he's obviously oysted these from somewhere, fuck knows where, but he's trying to sell them. And I think he was trying to sell them for like £15 a pop. And he's gone up to this old boy, this Irish fella. I mean, this fella was, he loved his beer, but always immaculately dressed, quite a tall fella as well and uh, didn't suffer fools gladly, but he'd had a few, and uh, he was sitting there with his mates, and this bloke's come up, and he went, oh, fellas, fancy buying a Cartier pen? And he went, what's this you're talking about, a Cartier pen? So he's, he's, he's um, giving him the pen, and he's, he's having a look at it and all that, and he's scribbling down, and he says, he says look, it's got the logo, and he's held it up to the light, and he says, oh, you can see the word castle. What's, what's this, a castle pen? And that's what I just, just remind me of. Art. I can see the word mild. Uh, 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 yeah, it's it's all in German. I'm not going to fucking be able to do that. If so, if one of you fellas out there can read German, there it is. Fill your fucking boots. You won't see this in the UK. I've not seen this in the UK at all. And as I say, the only time I've seen this before is um, is when my mate brought this over. And for the life of me, I can't remember what it tastes like. So let's revisit 2014. <laughs> Right, let's get it into ye olde glass. Now I've got one of these Ratshjern, I think that's how it's pronounced, from Hamburg glasses. I've got one of their beers as well, so I'm gonna do a review on them. I think they're a craft brewer from Hamburg. And um, I've, I've got some of that in the fridge, so I'll be reviewing that at some point. I've never been to Hamburg. Apparently it's a great place to go. The Reaper Barn and, and all that. And if you're into your football, a lot of people like St. Pauli. And what's the other team? SV Hamburg, who you, Kevin Keegan used to play for. I know they've got a big connection with Glasgow Rangers. But to be honest, if it ain't West Ham, I am not fucking interested. So there you go. Right. 
Oh, that doesn't smell good. That does not smell good. There it is in the glass. A very light carbonation. Bit of a head on it. But it doesn't smell that great, to be honest. In fact, it doesn't smell of much at all. There's a, there was an initial sulphur that came out of it, but yeah, not not bowling me over. It ain't like a Bavarian, put it that way. There it is in the glass. Very clear, slow moving carbonation. Probably in the style of a Dortmunder. But let's get it down the hatch, see what's going on. Post, as they say in Germany. Or, or do they? Who knows? Uh, no, that isn't too bad. Very, very similar to Vasteiner. It's got that... And Vasteiner are a, a Carlsberg-owned brewery. But that isn't bad, that isn't too bad. I will say that it's got, it's got that almost toasted type malty aroma. I don't know what that is. I can't, I can't put my finger on what, what ingredient is doing that. But, well, it, it's the malt, obviously, but they've done something to the malt. But it, it's quite a nice flavour. It's quite, quite a big malty flavour. I imagine it's a it's a combination of a a multi flavour and some some type of noble hop that's in there, but it's it's not on a par with the Bavarian stuff. You don't get that liquid bread. That is not the flavour you get from this. This is more like a a toast toasted bread, big toasted bread type flavour. It's a lot more palatable than the than the Holsten Pilsner. I will say that the German brewed Holsten Pilsner. It is nicer. It's not a massive standout beer, is bowling me over and really knocking me out. But it's it's quite nice. I certainly wouldn't turn my nose up at another one of these. Quite a light finish as well. Very refreshing, very drinkable. And I think I think they've done a little bit better job on this than they have on the Pilsner. The Pilsner just, it was just very run of the mill. Now, one of the most bland and boring beers that I've tried was the Dortmunder Export, or the DAB, D-A-B beer. I really didn't think much of that at all. It was... It had no nasties in it, but it was just so, so run of the mill. There was a little bit of character to this. Nice light finish on the end. Refreshing, as I say, but it has got a little bit of character on the palate as well. Quite nice. Yeah, no complaints. That isn't too bad. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not outstanding. It's not one that I'm going to be singing the praises of and saying, oh, fucking hell, Holston, Holston Pils is shit, but this is infinitely better. This is just okay. I mean, I know this is a, a owned by a, a macro brewer. I know they, they do cut corners. I know that the, this probably didn't taste the same years ago before Carlsberg took over, but mind you, that Holston was owned by Interbrew, so they've probably got the same same ethics. It's all about getting the beer out there, getting as much out there as possible, huge advertising campaigns and less emphasis on the flavour. But this ain't the worst beer in the world. I mean, if this was available over here in place of Foster's, this would be, I wouldn't say a fridge filler, but I certainly wouldn't turn my nose up here. I'm sure this tastes quite nice on, on draft if you can find it over there in Germany, I'm sure you can. Apparently, I was talking to uh, my mate, Norby, he was saying that the the draft Holston Pilsner is quite nice. 
from the bottle, not that great. I made well, beer is always going to taste better from keg or or cask, regardless of style. Well, all the time, but most of the time. But this this is quite nice. I quite like this. Yeah, no nasties, no complaints. Little bit of that malty, toasty flavour on it. And it reminds me a lot of the Vast Diner stuff. And again, I know that Vast Diner are under the umbrella, as I said, of Carlsberg. So there's probably some, I would say recipe sharing, but ingredient sharing at least. But if you like lager with a bit of, a little bit of character, then this isn't too bad. Now, if you're in Hamburg, obviously you're going to be sport for choice for beers over there. But this, this is just okay. I wouldn't say it's one of these beers that you have to try. I wouldn't say it's one that you would turn down the sink. But it's just, yeah, it's just reasonable. Just a good beer, nothing else, no frills, just good. So, what is the verdict on Holston Edel? Well, maybe that just does convince me that Carlsberg can actually produce a beer that is okay. Again, as I say, it's nothing special. Certainly better than the Pilsner. And it wouldn't be one that I would go out of my way for. You wouldn't find this over in the UK. I've not seen this over the UK at all. If I showed that to a few people, they'd recognise Holston, obviously, because Holston was a thing over here but you wouldn't you wouldn't see that edel stuff over there nobody would know what it meant for starters even the germans don't know what it means <laughs> fucking hell oh fucking hell beam me up the day i don't i can't work out what something means by he, he was obviously trying to translate it over to english so i'll give him a squeeze on that one but this ain't bad so my bottom line would be don't go out of your way to hunt this down you're really not missing much but if ever you're you're in hamburg or you do happen to come across a load of these on your travels then this ain't the worst beer in the world um i would give it i'd give it a seven out of ten and definitely no more it's just well would i give it a seven i'm talking between six and a half and seven um considering where it comes from considering it's a macro brewer i mean that's not a bad beer for a macro brewer i will say that i mean occasionally they do get it right i will acknowledge that i'm not saying all macro beer brewed beer is shit i don't like the ethics that they they promote but occasionally they'll come up with a beer and i'll tell you what i am not too proud to admit if a macro brewer comes up with a decent beer i've said it with a jupiter stuff from belgium that was quite nice that's an abm beer beer certainly better than their Stella. I definitely agree with that. Even over in Belgium as well, I'd say the Jupiler is nicer. Stella's not bad over in Belgium, believe it or not, but I do prefer the Jupiler. But this stuff, it's it's on a par with that. It's, it's, it's okay, it's not bad. And as I say, occasionally macro brewers will get it right. That it's not all tyrannical. And I'm not too proud to admit that either. That's one thing I do like to say on this channel and, and i do hope i promote that if a beer is good i don't care who brews it i'll tell you if it's good i look that if they're owned by carlsberg then yes yeah, so be it but that's not a bad beer so i think can i give it a six and a three quarter or am i just being a an arsey little twat no fuck it i'll give it a seven it's it's worthy of a seven it's it's, it's not bad at all no nasties reasonably refreshing a little bit of character for Carlsberg, I never thought I'd see the day, but I have, and here we are. So, 7 out of 10, would I recommend it? Don't go out your way, but if you can find it on your travels, it's not the worst beer in the world. Keep it cold, drink it cold, quite refreshing. And remember, beer is working class champagne.